So Wusu, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Joy, for inviting me today. I've been hearing a lot about the development of uh, personal protective equipment or PPE. And I understand that your lab is doing some work in that area. So I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the work you're doing related to COVID-19. Right. So my research lab is tackling engineering challenges in the world using 3D printing technologies. So examples are 3D printed biomedical sensors, 3D printed energy storage devices, or 3D printed sensing robots, etc. So right after uh, the widespread of COVID-19 in Canada, I carefully thought of how to help people in needs together with my grad students. As a 3D printing researcher and a manufacturing expert, I really like to design and manufacture items to help uh, for those in needs. So first, the group is, as you know, as you mentioned, uh, the, the, the frontline workers. We owe them a lot. So, and they desperately need uh, personal protective equipment. So doctors and nurses and uh, per- public sector workers in city hall, et cetera, need a lot of different PPEs. So we want to produce PPEs as, as many as possible. And secondly, in, my, uh, in this pandemic situation, of course, uh, patients themselves really need um, novel ventilator systems. So oh, I'm pushing for two sectors. One is for PPE and the novel ventilators. Okay, so let's start with PPE. PPEs uh, in terms of face shield, in terms of ear saver, in terms of door handle, etc. Uh, there are many things in need. So, for example, these are the examples of ear saver. We produced about 500. Ear saver. Ear saver means a mask, face mask uh, strap. So face mask has a, a ring here, right? So yeah. uh, many uh, frontline workers suffer about their back ear here. So we want to oh, make right, these it would, oh, okay. like, like these, right? And then ear, ear ring can be held here. So we produce about 500 of these ear saver to Vancouver General Hospitals. And uh, this is the example of door handle. So when we have a door in uh, handle, we need to touch and then uh, twist it to open push, right? But uh, if we have this, then our forearm can push this in, 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 instead of touching our hands. So a lot of uh, frontline workers in City Hall, they don't need to touch their door handle uh, when, the, when, when these. So we produce about 100 uh, units of these to City of Surrey, and they, they are really happy about that. So that's fascinating. These are the little things that we often don't think about, right? You know, um, how, for example, a mask might, over the course of wearing a mask for many days, irritate one's ears. And and so um, who's using the ear savers? I'm curious. Oh, doctors and nurses, especially. uh, I got a request from one of my collaborators in the BGH, nurse specialist, um, and uh, the uh, ICU unit uh, nurses using these too. So... And you're printing them in your lab, are you? Oh, it's an interesting point. So at the end of March, before the exemption, my lab is closed. Of, of course, all the labs in SFU closed. So we thought about how we can produce these. And interesting thing is collective efforts with uh, students. So as you may guess, uh, engineers, hobbyists, students, they have their own printers at home. So mm-hmm. I just uh, spread the words to my students. If there's anyone has a printer, please, please help us together. So about six students produce that the 500 units together at home. So you're harvesting basically these uh, using 3D printers in students' homes and in other people's homes. It's amazing. That's really incredible. That's really inspiring. So tell me about ventilators. I know we've been hearing a lot that um, patients with serious COVID-19 symptoms often need to be put on ventilators. And there's been a lot of concern that there's been, uh, that there's a shortage. So what are you doing in that regard? We need to follow the medical regulation to produce some ventilators, of course. But in terms of R&D stage, uh, I'm looking at the situation that the ventilation system is lacking in pandemic. In that situation, really like to produce 
a portable small size ventilator. So one of the interesting part uh, we are working on is 3D origami. So origami is actually uh, foldable. Like Japanese origami? Folding. That's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, from the two dimensional, let's say, it can be wrapped as a 3D tube and then it can uh, contract uh, and then release repeatedly. So we want to develop uh, 3D durable origami tube, which is ventilate, ventilators air tube. So we recently proposed this uh, ANSAC Alliance COVID-19 uh, program by using this. So we want to develop the novel uh, ventilator air tube from the origami uh, design. That is absolutely fascinating, Musu. So are you collaborating with researchers around the world on this and learning from others or how is that working? Oh yeah, that's a good question. So the van, in terms of ventilator, I'm working with uh, BGH. So Vancouver General Hospital, of course, is the Dr. Lillian Hong, a nurse specialist in UBC assistant professor. And she has a collaborator in respiratory therapist, Ingrid in the BGH. So yeah. we are a group uh, together, working together with a uh, project. That's amazing. You know, it's so impressive to me. I mean, here you are, an engineer, um, collaborating with a nurse and a respiratory therapist together, trying to figure out how to solve this really important problem. So congratulations. That's really interesting. Thank you. So on a timeline, like, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I know something like this might take a long time to design, but what's your hope uh, in terms of the ventilators? Right. In terms of ventilator, um, this uh, proposed project is actually one year long, but uh, we want to make, let's say, the six months and six months. So first to six months, we want to design and fabricate few prototypes, and then we can get a feedback from respiratory ther therapist of, of the BGH, and then based on that uh, uh, feedback in second uh, six months, we want to uh, improve and then uh, implement into the technology. Okay, interesting. So Wusu, I understand you're on the Surrey campus right now and things are pretty empty there. And so are you working with students in the lab and how are you maintaining physical distancing while you're trying to do your work? Uh, my lab is separate to two labs at this moment. So uh, we have a disinfection uh, plan that uh, only one student is attending inside of one lab and the other is attending the other lab. So uh, two students are coming in a day and then they can separate for the physical distancing. Yeah, that's so interesting because, I mean, it's complex enough doing this research, but then under these conditions as well, right? Trying to uh, manage, um, you know, making sure that we don't put our own researchers at risk. So good for you. That's amazing. Musu, how do you think your research is going to ultimately make a difference? What are you hoping for? What's really intriguing to me nowadays is how this 3D printing is going to change whole manufacturing concepts in a sustainable way. And... Uh, directly applicable to biomedical sectors. So I'm considering mostly two engineering challenges and biomedical challenges in my research program. Number one is designing novel architecture materials that uh, design functional biomedical applications. And number two is making novel 3D printing platform technologies that can produce a smart uh, biomedical systems. So these questions deeply involve both fundamentals and practical applications. So understanding on fundamentals of 3D printing together with the cutting edge uh, biomedical trends of 3D printing. So uh, by collaborating with the global experts and the relevant experts in different uh, fields uh, together with relevant industrial partners, I hope uh, my research will make a difference for um, out of box type and the bold idea. That's wonderful, Wusu. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, act, I'm really inspired. You could, uh, you know, you really are the embodiment of the engaged university, uh, working with community members, with the city, with clinicians, making a difference in the world. Um, so congratulations on your work. Um, uh, it's, I've really enjoyed speaking with you today. You know, so often when we think about COVID-19 research, we think about health researchers, um, biomedical researchers, and the engineers, they, they really can make a difference for us. And it's so great to focus on your work. Yeah, I mean, all, I always uh, ask my students, we need to give back to society. How? That's the question starting from. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you're a real inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joey.